All right, welcome back to Anton Math. And in this video, we're going to step away a little bit from these common number sets. We're still going to be, you know, using them in the future, but I'm going to review a little bit about factors and divisors of a number. Factors and divisors. All right, so let's let's say I have these two numbers a and b, and these are integers. Now we say a divides b. or we use this notation a and then a long line b. Now in this context this line doesn't mean such that. This means a divides b. And what this means when we say this, this means that there exists some c. All right, so I'm introducing a new notation here. This means exists. All right, before we had the upside down a that meant for all. This means there there's at least one, right? So exists some integer c such that b equals a times c, right? So a divides b, or this notation a divides b, that just means that a times something else equals b. So both a and c in this case are called divisors. of b. Right, we see here, you know, I could say the exact same thing here, c must divide b because there exists an a such that b equals a times c. Right, so these are both divisors of b. Now, divisors are not unique. Uh, let's, let's do a little example. Um, 12, I can write 12 as um, 2 times 2 times 3, or I can write it as 2 times 6, or 4 times 3, or negative 4 times negative 3, right, so on. Um, so we have, you know, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6 are all divisors of 12. Now here's where we make the distinction uh, between divisors and factors. Now divisors are going to be any number that divides uh, the number in question that we're talking about. Factors are the positive divisors. All right. So these are the, the divisors that are greater than zero. Or the positive divisors. So in my example here, two, three, four, six, are factors of 12. Okay, so that's the distinction. When we talk about a factor, we're always talking about a positive integer, whereas when we talk about a divisor, we could be talking about a positive integer, we could be talking about a negative integer, right? Divisors are much more general than factors, so not all divisors are factors, but all factors are divisors, okay? Now we say if a number C divides both a and b, c is called a common divisor. Now this is a lot of um, kind of definitions here, but c is called a common divisor of a and b. Right, so I mean, we can have lots of common divisors of numbers. Um, C, you know, is definitely not always going to be unique. Um, so let's take a look. Just a quick example, right? Um, I know that five is a common divisor of ten and fifteen, isn't it? And so it's negative 5, isn't it? Negative 5 is also a common divisor of 10 and 15, right? I'm not talking about common factors, but common divisors. So we can have lots of different common divisors. And we're not always going to, you know, look at all the common divisors, but oftentimes it's useful to look at the greatest common divisor, right? If we have a set of all these common divisors, one of them's going to be bigger than the rest of them. 
right? And we call that the greatest common divisor. So the greatest common divisor, and we denote that GCD, right? GCD is the greatest common divisor. Note that uh, sometimes we say GCD, sometimes people will say greatest common factor, but of course, you know, if it's a greatest common divisor, it's going to be one of the positive divisors, and there will always be a positive divisor. So the greatest common divisor and the greatest common factor are always going to be the same thing, and it's going to be the largest positive divisor or the largest factor of a number. So for example, GCD of 10 and 15 is going to be five, isn't it? That's the common divisor that is bigger than all of the other common divisors. And the GCD of two and four, well, that's just going to be two, isn't it? Two divides two and two divides four, and that's the biggest divisor that they have in common. So the GCD of two and four is two. Now if, uh, let me change colors here, if the GCD of two numbers, of two integers a and b, is equal to 1, we say that a and b are co-prime. Co-prime. Or sometimes we'll say relatively prime. And all that means is that the only divisor that they have in common is one or you know also negative one, um, but the greatest common divisor that they have is one. Um, so an example, uh, let's say we have GCD of four and nine. Well, the divisors of four are just plus and minus two, plus and minus four. You know, the divisor of nine are plus or minus three. Um, so this is just going to be one, isn't it? This is going to be the greatest number, the greatest integer that divides both four and one. So four and nine are co-prime. Right? And uh, sometimes we'll see another notation. Uh, sometimes it'll just be these parentheses 4 and 9 equals 1. These parentheses, it means GCD, um, but only in a context where it's not going to be confused with some kind of interval or some kind of uh, ordered pair, you know, like a point on a graph, things like that. Uh, we use this notation for a lot of different things, so it can be ambiguous, uh, but in the right context, oftentimes just these parentheses is going to mean the GCD of a number. So one more note uh, before we end here on divisors and factors. Uh, I want to note something about our rational numbers. So rational numbers, I said before, they can always be written in common form. So I have these rational numbers we said before. This is a over b, such that a and b are integers, and b is non-zero. Now I can actually add an additional restriction here. Okay, my additional restriction, I can write GCD of a and b equals 1. And that's, I'm not going to be taking anything out of my rational numbers. This is still the set of all rational numbers. And it comes back to that little thing I mentioned, you know, um, two fourths is the same thing as one half. And when we talk about sets, we don't repeat elements. We're looking at the set of all distinct elements. So if one half is in there, you know, infinitely many times, it, you know, and it's just wearing a whole bunch of different clothes, well, we only really care that one half is in there. Uh, we don't consider two fourths to be a separate element. Uh, than one half. So let's just say I have, you know, the way I can say this is always possible to be the case and I don't lose anything here. Let's just say I have this A over B where GCD of A and B equals 2, for example. Well, this just means that 2 divides A and 2 divides B, doesn't it? So we have some other number where a is going to be equal to 2c, b is going to be equal to 2d, right, from our definition before. So a over b, this is the same thing as 2c over 2d. I can cancel those twos. So that's the same as c over d. So I've done this in general here just to show you that it doesn't matter what a and b are. 
if they have some common divisor, and I didn't need to use 2 here, I could have used x here, right? I still would have just cancelled the x's, no difference. If I have a common divisor, I can always reduce the top and bottom by that common divisor, and I get a fraction that's equivalent to my original fraction, but I have this new piece of information, and this piece of information turns out to be very useful in the future, where if I know that all of my rational numbers can be written in a way that the numerator and the denominator are co-prime, that's going to help us to prove some important results later. You know, simple things like the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Without this constraint, it's, it's a much more difficult proof. But if we know that these can't divide each other, we can't simplify this anymore, the proof ends up being very easy. And, you know, once we get into proofs, we'll see that. But just a little aside, um, and that's it for factors and divisors, uh, kind of. <laughs> In the next video, we're going to talk about primes and uh, about prime factorization. We'll see you there.